Hey everybody, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. The rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Okay, maybe there haven't been any rumors of my death, but some of you may have wondered where I've been lately. A couple things have been keeping me away from YouTube. One is a major home renovation project that I've been doing that's taken me way longer to complete than I thought it would. The other is the fact that I live in Minnesota. It's summertime, and Minnesota is really nice in the summertime. And like many of you, it's tough not to spend it outside when the weather's so good. I have been working in the garage lately, and one of the things that's become apparent is that I need to become way more organized out in that space to make better use of it, and that's going to be the focus of this video. I needed a place to store some bar stock, and I had a couple of requirements about where I was gonna store that bar stock. I don't want to put up any kind of a, a, a racking on, that's going to be uh, on the floor, because eventually I'm just gonna have to sweep or work around that and it's gonna take up valuable floor space. And I didn't wanna do any shelves either because any horizontal surface seems to just collect junk. So the idea I had after standing in the garage is to use the space between the garage door rack and the wall and then on the upper half of the wall up by the ceiling where it's kind of dead unused space anyway. I went to Amazon to see what I could find and I couldn't find anything that met my needs, so I decided that, wait a minute, I have Fusion. I can design the parts that I want. And I also know a pretty badass fabricator named Jared Pickerel, who used to help me out in the CNC training classes that I did. He has his own uh, fabrication business called Pick Pickerel Welding. I'll put all the pertinent links and everything in this video where you can go and find uh, Jared. And Jared has agreed to take this project on and uh, do a little filming of him fabricating it. And so when I get this done and he gets the video sent back to me, I'll put a link in the video and you guys can head over to his channel where he's just starting out and see him fabricate whatever bracket design that I come up with. So let's jump back into Fusion and get started on this one. I'm in a Fusion design, and this isn't gonna be a super complicated design, but I think you guys might pick up a few little tips and tricks on this simple fabrication project. The first thing I wanna do is save my project, and so I'm gonna call this stock rack. And I'll just click save. And I know this is gonna have two components, a mounting plate and a rod. So I'm gonna right click on my design and say new component, and I'm gonna call that first component the mounting plate. And choose to go ahead and hit okay. Now I know I don't want this mounting plate to ever be able to move around, so before I even do anything from the assemble menu, I'm gonna create an as-built joint between the mounting plate and the origin, and then I'm gonna click okay. And now whatever I draw for this component, it won't be able to move because the original design, the original component is fixed in space. I wanna create a sketch on the front face and I'm gonna start out by using a center point rectangle located at the origin. And I want this to be four inches tall and I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna make this an inch and a half wide. And that's all I'm going to do for my first sketch. I'm going to extrude this. I don't expect this to hold really any weight at all. So I'm just gonna use some eighth inch steel, make it cheap and easy, and that's gonna be my base shape. Now I'm gonna put a little slot on the bottom and we'll see what this slot is going to do later on in the video, but I'm gonna start out by doing a slot and I'm gonna do a center point slot and I just need this to be very short and stout like that. And now I can do some dimensioning on this. I want this to be aligned vertically, uh, centered on the part, so I'm gonna use a horizontal vertical constraint between the origin and the center of the slot. And then I'm gonna put a couple dimensions on this. I'm gonna give this a width of 0.55 inches. I'm gonna dimension from the edge. I'll right click and choose pick circle arc tangent to grab the bottom of the slot. And I'll just drag that over here. I want that to be a quarter of an inch. And then I'm again gonna choose pick circle arc tangent between the two tangents of the circle, I'll move that over, and I want this dimension to be 0.6. You'll see why I'm kind of making this an ob round shape when I design the rod. So I'm gonna finish that sketch, and I'm gonna to go to a home view. I'm gonna extrude that region. I'm gonna pull the arrow the direction I wanna go, and it's my preference to say that I, my, what my design intent is. My intent is for this to always go through, so I'm gonna select all as my extent type, and go ahead and hit okay. 
So that's where the rod is going to sit coming off of this. The other thing I will need to do is put a couple holes so I can use a leg bolt to mount it to the two by sixes in the wall. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the front face and I'm going to drop a couple points in, not being too careful about where I put them. So one there and one about right there. And I want to use a horizontal vertical constraint to align them vertically on, uh, so they're centered on the part. So I'm gonna use that origin dot again between there and there and I'll use the origin one more time to the other point. Now they're vertically located. I'll drop a couple dimensions here. So grab the dimension command from that uh, edge to that point and I'll call that, I think I'm gonna go with half of an inch for that, not a quarter, we'll go a little farther away. So half of an inch. And from that point to that point, I'll set that as 1.75 inches. The major thing to take away is I could move this farther down, but as the rod, if I rotate this around, the rod's gonna come up at an angle, so it's gonna make it hard to get my wrench in there to get on the leg bolt, so I don't wanna get it too close to the space where the rod's gonna be. And again, this isn't gonna really hold any weight at all. It's, it's never going to be hundreds of pounds up on this, pal on this uh, stock rack or anything like that. So I'm gonna grab the hole command, I'm going to select my two points is where I want my holes to be. I want those holes to go all the way through. And these are going to be clearance holes. I'm just going to select my ANSI screw profile. And it doesn't really matter here. I'll select a hex head bolt. And we'll use a quarter inch uh, nominal size. And I'll choose OK. Now Jared's going to do some of this on a plasma cutter. I'm guessing he's probably going to drill these holes. Um, I don't know that for sure. I don't really care what they are as long as the quarter inch leg bolt goes through them. So my plate is mostly done. One last thing that I wanna do is just put a little round over on the corners, just so I don't have sharp corners on here. And a quarter of an inch should be probably more than plenty. And that should finish up my mounting plate. I'm gonna go activate my main design. And now I'm gonna right click and create a new component. And this component I'm gonna call as rod. I don't need to be all capital with rod. Okay, and I'll call that okay. You're gonna see my base plate goes out to let me know that it's no longer the active component. I'm now gonna create a sketch and I'm gonna put it on the right plane. And I wanna do a couple things to help me out. I wanna go and expand my sketches for the mounting plate and turn on that first sketch. And I'm gonna go create, project, include, project. I'm gonna project in that point right there, that center point of that slot and hit okay. I'm also going to do uh, project include project, so I could have done this at the same time. I'm just gonna go grab this edge right there, uh, that point, or I could have grabbed the whole back edge if I wanted to. I'm just gonna use the point for me. And I'll hit okay. Now I wanna draw a line, and I'm gonna make this line construction. So I'm just gonna draw a line starting at that point, not being too careful, and there's the line that I'm gonna draw. And I'm gonna vertically align that endpoint to that endpoint so that I know I have a nice midpoint to start from. I'm gonna uncheck my construction, and now I'm gonna draw the uh, path for the rod that I wanna make. So I'm just gonna kinda drag out here. I know the space between the wall to the garage door track is about 10 inches, so I wanna be a little bit under that. So I'm gonna start the dimension command between that point and this point, and I wanna do a horizontal dimension of 9.75. Give myself a little buffer. And then I want this angle to be about five degrees. So I'm just gonna come over here and say that this is gonna be 85 degrees and hit enter. And that's gonna be my sketch for that. So that's gonna be where I want my rod to be. In order to create the rod, it's gonna be pretty simple. I'll go to the create menu and I'm gonna choose the pipe command and I'm gonna select the rod. And now I'm just gonna say that I want a section size of half of an inch and I'll hit okay. So the reason I made that slot up round is what I think Jared's gonna do is he'll just stick the rod inside the slot and he'll push on it so that it binds on the top, this part binds on the top edge and this part binds on the bottom edge. And whatever that angle is, he'll tack weld it or weld it and he'll kind of plug weld the back side, fill it weld the front side and grind everything flush and I'll never exactly know how he did it. I'm not too concerned about the five degree angle I just don't want it to be exactly flat. I'd like a little bit of a rake to it. And as long as it's within 10 inches or nine, nine and three quarter the way that I have designed, that's the only critical things about this. 
design that I really care about. So I'm gonna go back to my home view, I'm gonna activate the main design, and what you'll see is if I grab this rod and I drag it, it moves around, and I don't want that to happen. Now I could try to add a joint here, and that's gonna be really hard. Um, Fusion wants particular points to snap to, and I don't really have the right points here. I may have, but I, I just think it's gonna be more difficult than what it's worth. However, I did design this part exactly where it needs to be, so it is where it needs to be. So what I can do is just do another as-built joint again. So I'm gonna use uh, assemble as-built joint between the rod and the mounting bracket, and I'll hit okay. And now when I try to click and drag on that thing, it won't move around anymore. So this isn't a very complex design, pretty quick and easy as you can see from what I've done. Um, a lot of CAD projects are gonna be like this. It doesn't always have to be big elaborate fancy designs for things to be useful. I'm gonna get this design to Jared. So to do that, I'm gonna save this and rather than uh, exporting the file and attaching it in an email, I'm gonna do it in a different way. I'm gonna click on my data panel and I'm gonna go find this part that I have open right here. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna choose share link. And I'm gonna to toggle the button to allow anybody with this link to be able to download it. Uh, I'm gonna allow them to download it and I'm not gonna require a password. It's not that top secret. Although if it was, I could require a password to be able to access it. And now I'll hit copy. And that will take care of the design side. Let me hop over in a, uh, just for a second to show you what the link is gonna look like for Jared once he gets a hold of it. All right, so I went and launched a web browser and some of you may be wondering, why not just download and attach the file? And here's the reason. What I can do is I can just copy and paste in that link that I received. Now for Jared, he's just gonna get something he can click on in his email. And so I'll paste that in and hit enter. It's gonna take me to the online view of this file and note that I'm looking at this inside of a web browser. I don't need to have anything installed in order to see this file. Any of the modern web browsers are gonna be able to open and look at this file where users can do things like mark it up, turn the visibility on and off, do explosions. A couple other nice functions that are in here is on the download button. Maybe they're not inventor users. Maybe they'd like to work with step files or maybe they work with they'd like to work with IGES files or they're an Inventor customer. Maybe they're a Fusion customer and they want the Fusion Archive file, but there's even an easier way. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this button called Open in Fusion 360, which Jared is a Fusion user, so go ahead and open that. And what's gonna happen now, when I switch over to Fusion, you're gonna see this design is already opened up. It's telling me that I'm using the original file because I'm the, I'm the data author. And so there is the file open in Fusion and I didn't have to do anything in order to make that happen. I just clicked on that button and it downloaded it. I'm gonna get this file off to Jared and I'm gonna wait to publish this until I receive the files back and I'll unwrap them and we'll take a little look at them and give you a look at the finished project, uh, the finished product, I should say. Not the project, I probably won't install them, but you can see what the how these brackets turned out. Okay, I just got the brackets back from Jared and they came out pretty nice. Uh, pretty much what I was expecting. You can see there's the slight angle to them. You can maybe see where uh, he ground the back a little bit or after he filled it with weld. Powder coated them for me, which is pretty nice. And these are ready to go and get installed on the wall. So pretty simple little design, but it's one of those things that's going to make my life a lot better. And now I've got a place to store stock in my garage and get it out of my way so it's ready for when I need it, but not something that I'm constantly moving around and working around. Hope you guys like, like this one. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to do a better job of getting more frequent updates out for uh, these videos. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.